If you're new to model railroading, you're going to want to see this about power supplies. So let's get started right now. I'm Tom Kovichak, and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And today we're going to talk about power supplies or power packs or transformers, no matter what you want to call it. But probably you started out with something like this. If you got a starter set, a Bachman starter set, you got a power supply like this one here. You had a little wall wart that plugs into here and you put your little plug right here going to your tracks. And then you got a thing right, two plugs right here for accessories. Now in another video after this one here, we're going to talk about how to change this AC accessory into DC on your power pack. If you don't have a constant DC source on your power pack, that's a future episode. If this is your first time here and you would like to see more about model railroading for beginners, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, ding that bell and that'll notify you whenever I have a new video coming out. So let's get going right now. We have modelers that are just starting out and then there are those like myself that have been out of the hobby for years and coming back. Now I came back about five or six years ago, but I stayed up with everything that was going on. But you older folks, you might be familiar with a Tyco power pack, AHM, model power. And if you're from any European country, you'd have one from Trix, a Titan. But we're going to talk about some of the newer ones that are available now. Now this one right, this model right here isn't brand new. It's still pretty old. They still make a variation of this one right here. Now this one is the Railmaster 2400 Tech 2 made by MRC. This one here has six terminals on here. It has the AC accessories. It has variable DC which goes to the track and we have fixed DC. Not all power packs are like that. So basically what we're going to talk about today is the variable DC that goes to the track power or an accessory AC which goes to your accessories. That's what most power packs have on them. Even the older ones. This is an AMC that I probably got about 30 plus 40 years ago. Same thing with the Tyco. But this is what you see on the newer starter sets right now. The Bachman starter set, you see this type right here. We're going to go beyond the starter transformers and take you up into Tech 2 and some other ones also. The first thing you want to take into consideration when you're buying a new power pack is how big of a layout are you going to have? How many locomotives are you going to have? What are you going to use the power pack for? There are different ranges of wattages that you could find. And we'll go on the computer to see what you'll be looking at when you're buying a power supply. Now, most of the power supplies on there are from MRC and this is not a paid endorsement. I'm not getting paid by them to, to talk about this, but most of the power packs that you're going to find for HO or N scale is going to be MRC because they make a lot of different versions of it. So let's go on the computer to see what's going on there. When you go to your local hobby shop or go online, you're going to be faced with a lot of decisions. You're going to be looking at a lot of stats about the power supplies. And I'm going to show you a few tips to take a look at to see what is the best power supply for you for your situation. So let's take a look at some online right here. Now, if you go online and Google Model Railroad DC Power Pack, you're going to have a lot of items 
that you'll see on here you'll have a lot of different hobby shops that are online that carry them you'll even find easy power supply for model railroad one of my videos there but anyway i wanted to show you ebay first you're going to find a lot of power packs on ebay all assorted sizes shapes age now this is one that has a lot of Lionel ones on there and I pulled up another eBay earlier that had some vintage Tyco and AHM power plaques that I showed you in my train room that I have. But anyway, be very careful when you're going on eBay to buy anything. Research, research, research. I'm going to pull up another one. Here's Pfeiffer Hobby. And if you want anything from Kato, go ahead to his website, Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer Hobby Supply. But let's go to some other ones that I pulled up here. We'll go over here to MRC's webpage. And as you can see, they have a lot of different power supplies for your model railroad in DC. They have the Tech 7 the dual control one and they have the tech 7 the single control one and you can see that they're not too far away in price so now here's where you have to pay attention because both transformers look identical the only difference is one has one throttle one has two throttles but you have to look at the power available on these models and the one with the one throttle has more wattage than the one with two throttles and it's just a basic it has direction for both of them and speed controls on it no real um, frills on it let's pull up the instruction manual on there and let's see what kind of uh, specifications Ampex 700 okay now they have 700 760 780 on here and here's a good place to to be able to look at the total output of them now on the 700 you got 20 volt amps on the 760 20 volt amps 780 20 volt amps now the 780 that has the two throttles on it each throttle is 10 volt amps at 14.5 volt dc and then you have 14.8 volt AC. The only thing different on this one here is the AC is a little bit lower and the DC is a little bit lower on each throttle. So that's another thing that you might want to take into consideration. Now you can see on there, even though both transformers have the same output, 20 volt amps, on the two throttle version, those 20 volt amps are divided into each throttle on there so actually you're getting half the power on each one of those throttles as you would on the 760 so the 780 even though it has the two throttles on there your power on each individual throttle is going to be a lot less than what it is on the 760 that only has the one throttle. So this is where you have to really pay attention to what you're buying. And it's not just on the MRC ones, it's on everyone. So go online, find the instruction manual. So see what the specs are on each transformer that you are thinking of purchasing before you buy them so you know exactly what you're getting and then you won't be surprised once you get it so research 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 that's what I'm that's what I'm going to stress all the time is find out what you're going to buy and know exactly what it is that you are going to buy so you could tell from that spec sheet what you're actually getting so pay attention and do your research and here are a few more that they have this is more this one right here is more like the style almost except for they don't have the big knob on it like I have and they have the uh, terminals on the side of it this one here is 18 volt amp you could see that there's quite a few on there you have to take a look around 
and see what your needs are for your model railroad. You can get a lot of used power packs from people go to train shows and you'll find a lot of them there. A lot of people are going over to DCC and they have no need for their power packs. I have probably 10 power packs in a tote over there that I don't use. I just use them for demonstrations on my videos. But I bet you there's a lot of other modelers who have the same thing, that they have a lot of old power packs that are perfectly good that they were are willing to get rid of. Even if you go to a train show and talk to other modelers there, you might run into somebody that will have some that'll sell them to you dirt cheap. So take a look, ask, ask around, see what you could find. There's a lot out there. Basically, they're all the same. They all do, do the same thing. You just have to see how much power they actually can handle. And that is what determines what you're going to need on your model railroad. If you're just going to want, run one locomotive at a time on an oval, you're not going to need that much power on there. And you can get away with a very inexpensive power supply. But if you want to run multiple trains, you have multiple uh, ovals, you have multiple blocks on there, and you want to get up into running more trains on more tracks, then you're going to have to go with a higher wattage and maybe even a couple of uh, power supplies. The ones with the dual, the ones with the dual throttle, their wattage is a little bit lower than the single throttle. So you have to take that into consideration. Do you want to buy two power supplies that are a higher wattage or one power supply with two throttles that are a lower wattage? You have to make that decision yourself. I hope this helped you out and we'll go back out into the train room to end this thing out here. In future episodes, we'll be covering more on how to power your model railroad and how to use AC and DC on your model railroad, mostly DC with external power sources. So keep an eye out for those and we'll see you.